small group. And I have to say, getting a Matrix um, Award last month was honestly one of the highlights of my career. So thank you so much. Thank you to all the Nancys here. Um, <laughs> some in the back, I, I, I'm sure. Um, but when, when, and also welcome to Liz. I'm not sure, it's not, it's not quite my position to actually welcome you, but I'm so excited for you. And I'm excited for Wiki too, because as we're sort of colleagues and friends, I know that you will build on what Nancy has done, and um, I look forward to seeing what you're doing, and I hope that we can be part of it. Um, but when Liz asked me uh, to, to talk tonight, I thought about what I could say that would be useful and actionable, and I'm a very practical person, and I thought the most useful thing we could do, let's talk about money. <laughs> okay, now, did you hear that noise? That, that, that's the nervous giggle which precedes all the oxygen leaving the room. <laughs> uh, and that makes it hard to breathe, let alone talk. But this is important. Now, don't shy away from personal topics. We know we, you know, as Liz referenced in our lunch, we sat there for four hours and we talked about everything. We talked about our cleanses, our IDDs, our osteotomies. <laughs> But you know what we didn't talk about? And you know what's too intimate to discuss? Our benefits package. <laughs> so recently, a friend of mine was hired for a job uh, that was very similar to one that I had held in the past, not so long ago. And she reached out to me for advice. And I decided to do something slightly emboldened, I think, by having spent a lot of time with Sheryl Sandberg recently. I decided to do something I'd never done before, and I decided to pull back my own personal veil of secrecy, and I decided to show her my bottom line. So I pulled out my old contract, and I went over with it. I went over it with her. Was it awkward? It was a bit. Was it helpful to her? You bet it was. So many women, and I count myself in this group, head into negotiations ill-prepared and overstressed. Sometimes we're more focused on getting it over with than we are getting our desired outcome. And yet, in many of those cases, we live for years with the results of that outcome. Now, I've made many, many mistakes. I got into contract negotiations so excited for the job that I didn't argue for myself properly. And my first real mistake, which I look back on and I cannot believe I did this, um, it came with my second job. So this is going back 25 years. And 25 years ago in London, where I was working, uh, as in New York at the moment, it was a really, really difficult job market. And uh, I had started my career at a small, prestigious magazine called The Spectator. And I had been there a couple of years, and I was really excited to get hired by a newspaper called The Daily Telegraph. It was very, very competitive at the time. I was super excited. Um, nevertheless, I was a bit surprised when the agreement letter <laughs> arrived, and it showed that my monthly salary would be less than I was actually earning. And so I thought to myself, oh, you know, I, I, this is going to be difficult for me, but you know what, I really, really want to do it. And then I thought, you know what, this is a test. It's sort of test not only of them testing me to see if I want the job, but it's a sort of metaphysical test. How badly do I want this career? And I thought to myself, I did want it badly, so I quickly calculated how I would make this lower paycheck work. I would reduce my living expenses, no clothes, no cheese. <laughs> I wouldn't take the subway, I cycle everywhere, no cheese, <laughs> no protein at all. <laughs> Having backpacks around Europe and being quite good at standing outside the back doors of restaurants and asking for stale baked goods, I sort of factored that into it. Um, and I thought, well, you know, I really, really want to do this. Uh, it's it be a sacrifice, but it will be worthwhile. I'm investing in myself. Um, I will manage it. So I got there. I was super excited. I didn't say anything to anybody. And then I got my first salary check. And I realized that they were actually paying me four times what I had been earning. It had been a 
typo. <laughs> and that's how out of touch I was with what I should have been being paid. In fact, what I was being paid. Now, as a boss uh, who's responsible for the bottom line, as are many of the women in this room, I understand that I don't want to, and you don't want to, pay more than you have to for good quality staff. Um, but as a woman, but as a woman, I'm very conscious that historically we have been underpaid, and no one should take it. So this is my call to action to everyone in this room. Let's all make an effort to reach out to someone junior and offer them the cold, hard data that will help them get what they're actually worth. Let's take some of the mystery out of these negotiations. Let's have some frank discussions about salaries and bonuses and perks. One definition of power is that power is access to information. Well, I believe that by providing access to this kind of information, we will all empower each other. Which is not to say, before anybody asks, that I intend to start telling everybody what I make. I, mean, I would rather talk about my latest cleanse. Um, but we have a wage gap to close. So let's help close it.